peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. to the king. After her, the bridesmaids follow in the procession. With joy and gladness they are brought. And enter into the palace of the king. In place of fathers, O king, you shall have sons. You shall make them princes over all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered from one generation to another. Therefore nations will praise you forever and ever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. 
We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. When I hear this gospel, I've always imagined a fountain. I imagine these young people playing around a fountain in the middle of this marketplace. What's in my imagination isn't a plaza in Jesus' day, but something more mid-20th century. A little like a scene from Roman Holiday. I guess that I imagined a fountain because of the connection with John the baptizer. Or maybe it's a place from my mid-70s West German childhood. The children I imagined playing certainly look like my friends. They play the games we played and sing the songs we would have sung. If you look beyond this imagined fountain in this marketplace, Jesus and some of his companions have come to get some fruit, some bread, whatever. Jesus and his friends, they run into, they run into some of his curious opponents, the ones who were so intrigued or bothered by Jesus' teachings and holiness that they just can't let him be. The children would be singing what we would think of as a nursery rhyme, or it could be the equivalent of a pop song. They weren't quoting Aristotle. They weren't uttering proverbs. Childhood is a modern ideal. Of course, there have always been children, but the sweet, darling vision of innocence that we might assume when we hear the word children 
isn't what Jesus' hearers assume. Generally, people loved their children. The Gospels themselves witnessed to such wholehearted commitment. However, the wider cultural norm, especially in the wider Hellenistic world, considered children in general to be on par with squirrels or stray dogs. So the New Testament's repeated use of children as a positive analogy for the way of discipleship, it would have sounded somewhat insulting. And here, where children are carriers of sacred truth and wisdom, is stepping way outside the status quo. In 2012, a boy named Robbie was stuck at home, or stuck in the hospital again. When you have a brittle bone disease, times of immobil immobil immobility, immobility can be just par for the course. And so to keep him busy, his older brother-in-law started a video project with him. It was just a silly little delight intended just to be for themselves, a video of what a kid president might have to say to anyone who would listen. Things like, if you can't think of anything nice to say, you aren't thinking hard enough. Or, give people high fives just for getting out of bed. Being a person is hard sometimes. The internet is the modern marketplace. It is the fountain and the place where people gather and share. And that child, Robbie, the kid president, he uttered pep talks that went viral. One of the things that has changed since Jesus' day is that sometimes we are more willing to hear the truth from a child than from a peer, especially a child with a Muppet-like laugh and a sly smile. I believe a big part of the reason for this change, for this embrace of childhood, is because of Jesus himself, his very incarnation, his humble birth to struggling parents in a backwater town. It changed. It changed us. It changed how we see all children and our duty to them. We don't inherit our world from our parents. We borrow it from our children. How should that truth, in the light of Jesus, shape our choices? The scene we just witnessed in the marketplace has Jesus responding to his detractors, saying, well, basically saying, we just can't win with you because you're not really listening. But he's also subtly repeating the fragility of his own life, the threat that he was under. The commentary regarding he and John, some of those things that he mentions are punishable by death. He whistles a tune of his own fragility in this life, his own fragility for being so transparent to God. Jesus doesn't show up and issue report cards or reject the way that we are made. He comes alongside our play fountains enters our markets, and walks with us through our dark valleys. He sings along and he welcomes us, the gluttons and the challengers, the least, the last, and the lost. He comes to love us all so wholeheartedly that our tune falls in line with his. Do you hear them, the wisdom children playing around the fountain? What are the words that they sing to us right now? So let us pray. Healing and sovereign God, overmatch our resistant ears with your transforming speech. Infiltrate our jadedness and our fatigue. Touch our yearning by your words and through your out loudness, draw us closer to you. We are ready to listen. In the name of the Holy Trinity, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
As you are able, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your words and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We pray today for the names on our prayer lists. Sue, Michael, Joyce, Mike, Rick, Tim, Rebecca, Bill, the Zerfas family, Anna, Jack, Jane, Nancy, Cameron, Megan, Cheryl, Stephen, Chase, Barbara, Catherine, Doris, Lee, Irene and Dan, the Bilkey family, Dave, Jessica, Scott, Donna, Ricky and Paige, Austin, Frank, Bob, Jean, and baby, infant, baby Vincent. We also pray for those who serve in our nation's military, including Richard, Eric, Michael, Chris, Mark, Michael, Marshall, Nicole, Joshua, David, Tony, Mark, Timothy, Jerome, William, Austin, Neil, Rob, Evan, James, Robert, and Robert. We also pray for our first responders, Jim, Rob, Frank, Tom, Joan, David, Michael, Mariana, Aaron, Josh, Doug, Art, Lee, Jesse, Mitchell, and Wayne. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O God, who has taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor, grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God of the present moment, God, who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart. Bring hope and courage to your people as we wait in uncertainty. Bring hope that you will make us equal to whatever lies ahead. 
Bring us courage to endure what cannot be avoided, and the obedience to refrain from what must be avoided for the well-being of all. For your will is health and wholeness. You are God, and we need you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And on this Independence Day weekend, Lord of all the worlds, guide this nation by your spirit to go forward in justice and freedom. Give to all our people the blessings of well-being and harmony. But above all things, give us faith in you, that our nation may bring glory to your name and blessings to all peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This is the moment when we might have an offertory in normal times and when we would also celebrate your ongoing commitment to your financial commitment and your time and talent commitment to the life and ministry of Christ Church here in this neighborhood. And I want to remind you about that and celebrate the fact that it's been so steadfast so far. I also want to turn your head to any of the announcements that are available in our bulletin on our Facebook page and available in the email that goes out and the newsletter that was mailed last week to your homes. There's lots of good information there to sustain your faith at home while we are together apart. That said, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And the blessing of the one God of love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you this day and forever and for always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God.